Let's start things off as we always do with our big story of the night with Bryn Weiss. He's in Washington tonight. Bryn, what do you got for us? Well, David, it was billed as a major economic speech, and Mitt Romney delivered one in Ames, Iowa today, but critics are saying there wasn't anything new. In fact, it was just many of the same old platitudes that we've heard from Romney before. Watch this little clip. President Obama frequently reminds us that he inherited a troubled economy. But a troubled economy is not all that he inherited. He also inherited the greatest nation in the history of the earth. Now, Romney touched on many themes that we've heard about in the campaign before, Medicare, Social Security, and also the bipartisan work that he worked uh, that he did as governor of Massachusetts with a Democrat-controlled legislature. But there was one piece of news today that Romney touched on. That, of course, is the GDP growth for the third quarter. It was released today, and it shows the U.S. economy grew by 2% uh, in the third quarter of 2012, and that is up, of course, from the second quarter growth in at 1.3%. The first quarter of 2012 grew by 2% as well, and the last quarter of 2011 grew 4.1%. Now, to put this all in perspective, over Obama's term as president, the U.S. economy has grown on average 3.1%. In Bill Clinton's first term, it grew by 13.9%, just to give a little uh, uh, comparison there. Uh, but what's interesting about Romney's take on the numbers isn't that it's positive. In fact, it shows the economy is still very, very vulnerable and weak. Watch this. Today we received, by the way, the latest round of discouraging economic news. Last quarter, our economy grew at just 2%. After the stimulus was passed, the White House promised that the economy would now be growing at 4.3%, over twice as fast. Slow economic growth means slow job growth and declining take-home pay. That's what four years of President Obama's policies have produced. Americans are ready for change for growth, for jobs, for more take-home pay, and we're going to bring it to them. Now, the irony, of course, about Romney's speech today in Ames, Iowa, David, is that it was actually given at a construction firm that benefited from Obama's stimulus funds. Kinsler Construction is the company, and it received some $1.2 million in government loans and also received $600,000 in government contracts as part of Obama's stimulus program. Even though Romney was very critical of that stimulus in his speech today, from Kinsler Construction. Democrats are also pointing out that there was nothing new in Romney's major economic speech and a statement from Liz Smith, she's an Obama campaign spokeswoman, she said today, quote, Romney has started promising big change, but the only change Romney is offering is to take us back to the same failed policies that crashed our economy in the first place. That's not the change we need. And with every major speech, Mitt Romney just reminds voters that's all he's got to offer. And as you mentioned earlier, David, President Barack Obama was also talking about jobs in the economy today in interviews he did in Washington, D.C., one of which was with MTV, clearly reaching out to a younger audience. Obama said the U.S. government will have more money to uh, make on spending programs because it's ended the war in Iraq and is winding down the war in Afghanistan. Watch this. I want us to use some of the money that we're saving from ending the war in Iraq, winding down the war in Afghanistan, to put people back to work here in the United States, mm -hmm. be rebuilding roads and bridges and schools and broadband lines into rural communities. That puts people to work right now, but it also lays the ground, groundwork, the foundation for economic growth in the future. Now, David, we talked today about GDP numbers, but the real numbers that could really affect this campaign are going to be coming out a week today. Next Friday, we'll get the last jobs report before the election, and this could be really a make-or-break moment of this campaign. If the unemployment rate slips even lower than 7.8% where it is now, that would be a real boon to the Democrats. If the unemployment rate goes up, you can imagine that would really benefit Mitt Romney. It's unfortunate Republicans are probably hoping for higher unemployment, but we'll see what happens a week from now. David? And, of course, uh, we almost had this in the 2011 campaign here in Canada where uh, the opposition parties, it would have been better for them had the economy been weakening, and that would help their case against Stephen Harper. But you can't have an opposition politician, or a Republican in this case, start talking down the economy. There's a couple other data points, Bryn, and we were talking, of course, last night that you had the night off because we were busy with Mark Carney, our central bank governor. 2.1% 2 .2 growth is definitely slow growth. But I think this is one of those cases where it's on the one hand, on the other hand, because if you look deep inside the numbers, why is that growth so slow? 
mostly because of business investment. Businesses are slowing their spending. That goes possibly to them. We could see higher unemployment as businesses are not hiring people. On the other hand, consumer spending was up, and that goes to the idea that consumers, voters, are feeling better. In fact, Bryn, just before we came on air, Gallup had a poll out for the first time, the first time in five years, and the first time ever in Obama's presidency, more Americans say they are better off this time than they were this time a year ago compared to those who say they're worse off, 38% to 34%. That generally is good for an incumbent. So this is going to be back and forth economic data over the next week or so, 11 days, with these two candidates. Yeah, yeah, that's right, David, and that's a great point. The, these numbers are really being seen as positives and negatives from both campaigns because uh, with business uh, confidence down, that maybe bodes well for Republicans heading into next week's job numbers uh, and perhaps shows that businesses are worried probably about the fiscal cliff that's looming uh, come January 1st and all those huge spending cuts that are, that are put in place unless a deal is worked out. But as you mentioned, the two big numbers contributing to that 2% growth are consumer spending and actually the housing market is coming up as well with new New home buys higher now than they were a year ago uh, at this date. So with consumer spending, uh, with consumer confidence in the economy up, uh, that could really bode well for Obama when it comes to voters because Americans think the economy is doing better, uh, they're spending more, they're buying new homes. Uh, those are all numbers that work in Obama's favor. The fact that businesses may be a little suspicious about what's coming down the pipe uh, may actually mean uh, that uh, there would be fewer jobs and those numbers could benefit Romney. So really we're going to see both campaigns spinning these numbers uh, in the next week because because as we heard from Mitt Romney, he's saying 2% growth is still too slow. And that's right. If you consider China uh, economy is growing at about 7% now, and the U.S. is growing at just 2%. And as I mentioned, Bill Clinton's first term, he had 19 or 13.9 percent growth and even in Bush's first term overall there was 9.2 percent GDP growth. Obama over the past four years has averaged 3.1 percent growth and people say that's barely enough to keep up with uh, uh, inflation and the numbers and the jobs that are being created so it's hardly growth at all really. And, and it was interesting to hear that Romney was focusing on the fact that he could get some bipartisan stuff done because as we heard from our governor of the Bank of Canada last night and I think a lot of people say the private sector in the United States is largely getting their act together that the, the chief uh, challenge for the economy in the U.S. is the fiscal cliff. And that means whoever is, is president on November the 8th, don't pop the champagne corks. There is a ton of work to do. And so presumably we need to hear from both these candidates about that economic challenge. Uh, that, that's a great point, David. And many people say, look, everyone's been ignoring this fiscal cliff that is looming over the U.S. Uh, just to come January 1st. All these huge cuts are going to come into effect. The Bush tax, the Bush era tax, high, uh, tax cuts are going to expire. So people's taxes are going to go up. The government's going to slash spending. No one wants this sequestration or the, the fiscal cliff to come into effect. Uh, but also consider this. The Democrats have been saying, look, it's been Republicans in Congress that have r routinely stopped and uh, obstructed any efforts to come to some sort of compromise. If the makeup of Congress doesn't change, you could imagine Democrats might uh, obstruct Mitt Romney if he wins, and Republicans might continue to obstruct Obama if he wins. So the, the makings of what led to the fiscal cliff in the first place might not be resolved after the election if, the, if Congress stays the same makeup. So we'll see how this is all worked out uh, after the election. All right, Bryn Weiss, thank you so much. We'll be back to Bryn a little later on in the show.